Once upon a time, there lived a girl named Ireti. Ireti was a very hard-working girl who lived with her auntie Bola in a very calm village. Her auntie also had a daughter named Bamidili who was of the same age as Ireti. They all lived together and Ireti worked at her auntie's farm. Her cousin Bamidili hated to walk and would gallivant around the village with her friends whilst Ireti worked so hard at her auntie's farm. She would wake up early and head to the farm to work, returning late at night when everyone would have gone to sleep. Her auntie punished her one day when Ireti mistakenly broke her auntie's clay pot. She was punished to work at the farm till late at night and has been doing this for months. One night, Ireti was still working at the farm when she saw a girl who had no face. Ireti was terrified as shivers ran down her spine. She summoned the courage to ask the strange girl who she was and what had happened to her face. But her questions were met with complete silence. As Ireti was trying to figure out what was going on, the strange girl pointed at a direction and began to walk. Ireti, filled with fear, decided to run away, but something urged her to follow the girl to see what she was pointing at. Ireti followed the girl for a few minutes till they got to a hut inside the bush. Everywhere was dark and all Ireti could hear were the sounds of crickets and frogs. Ireti stared at the strange girl in fear as the girl pointed at the hut and disappeared. Despite being afraid, Ireti summoned the courage to go into the hut. She looked around but saw nothing. Filled with fear, Ireti then decided to head back home. By the time she got home, it was already so late and her auntie was now furious. Ireti tried to explain what happened to her auntie but all she said made no sense. Her auntie then punished her by starving her of food that night and her stomach grumbled all through the night. The next morning, Ireti woke up early and headed straight for her auntie's farm. She walked tirelessly despite being hungry and when dawn came, everyone dispersed, leaving only her in the farm. Ireti walked into the night and when she was about leaving the farm, she saw the faceless girl again. This time, the girl pointed at a different direction and began to walk. Ireti followed the girl and they arrived at a very big farmland. Ireti asked the girl if the farmland belonged to her and the girl shook her head in agreement. Before Ireti could ask the girl another question, the girl disappeared leaving her all alone in the farm. This was almost midnight and Ireti wandered into the farmland trying to figure out why the girl had brought her there. She walked for a few minutes and stumbled upon a strange box on the floor. Ireti picked the box up and rushed home in fear. When she got home, she opened up the box and saw a very beautiful necklace. Next to the necklace was a note which read, This necklace will only sit on the neck of its owner. Ireti could not understand what was going on. So she hid the necklace away from where her auntie or cousin would find it. The next night, Ireti waited for the faceless girl to appear. She stayed back at the hut where the faceless girl had taken her to some night ago. Ireti heard some footsteps approaching. So Ireti rushed to hide and to her greatest surprise, she saw a very beautiful girl rushed into the hut. Ireti was about to make her presence known to the girl to see if the girl would be able to assist her in figuring out what was going on. 
But the girl said something that made Ireti to hold back. Ireti then watched as the girl left the hut and decided to secretly follow her. She trailed the girl to the king's palace and this made her more confused. What has the palace got to do with the faceless girl? She thought to herself as she returned home bemused. The next morning, Ireti headed to the farm and decided to ask a passerby if they knew the owner of the farmland that the faceless girl took her to a few nights ago. The passerby revealed to Ireti that the farmland she was talking about belonged to the queen of the village. This revelation was puzzling as Ireti could not understand why the faceless girl would hide a box of necklace in the queen's land. So Ireti waited that night for the faceless girl to appear and when she did, she asked the girl who she was. The faceless girl could obviously not speak. So Ireti asked the girl to show her something that belonged to her or better still, take her to a place that one could use to identify her. The girl then began to walk and Ireti followed her quietly. They walked for a few minutes and arrived at the farmland where Ireti saw the box of necklace the other day. Ireti then decided to ask the girl a stupid question. She asked if the girl was the queen of their village and the girl nodded her head in agreement. Everything was now becoming complex as Ireti could not understand why a faceless girl was claiming to be the queen of their village. The next morning, Ireti decided to sneak out of the farm to go to the palace. When she arrived at the palace, she saw the beautiful girl that came into the abandoned hut the other night. She asked one of the palace guards who the beautiful lady was and the guard revealed that she was their new queen. Ireti then left the palace confused as nothing made sense to her. She got to their farm and waited till nightfall for the faceless girl to appear. When she saw the faceless girl, she asked her who the queen at the palace was and the faceless girl directed her to the abandoned hut once again. This time, the faceless girl walked into the hut and pointed at two pictures. Ireti looked at the pictures and saw the picture of the beautiful lady at the palace and a second picture of a very ugly looking woman. Ireti asked the faceless girl to point out her own picture and the girl pointed at the picture of the beautiful girl Ireti saw at the palace. Then Ireti asked the faceless girl who the girl at the palace was and the girl pointed at the picture of the ugly looking woman. Ireti then asked the faceless girl if the ugly woman stole her face and the faceless girl nodded in agreement. It was now that everything made sense to Ireti who asked the faceless girl how she could get her face back. The girl then touched her neck and Ireti realized that the girl was talking about the necklace. Ireti told the girl to wait in the hut while she rushes home to fetch the necklace. It was already late at night and Ireti's auntie and cousin were home. Ireti got into the house and reached for the necklace. As she was about leaving the house, her auntie stopped her requesting to know where she was going and what was inside the box she was holding. Ireti pleaded with her auntie to let go and her auntie told her that if she left the house, then she should not bother ever returning. Ireti pleaded with her auntie that it was an emergency, but her auntie got so angry and began to throw Ireti's bags out of her house. Ireti paid no mind to this as she was focused on helping the faceless girl. By the time she returned to the hut, the faceless girl was nowhere to be found. All Ireti saw was a bottle which had a little girl inside. The girl seemed unconscious and Ireti took the bottle with her as she headed straight for the palace. 
it was already night and the king was about going to bed. So Ireti pleaded with the guards to allow her see the king, but they refused as the king did not entertain visitors at that time. Ireti then slept at the gate of the palace and when morning came, the king sighted her sleeping at the gate and asked his guards to go fetch her. When she went in to see the king, she pleaded with the king to speak with him in private. Ireti explained everything to the king, who laughed at the ridiculousness of the story. The king then asked Ireti how she was going to prove to him that what she has been saying was true, and Ireti brought out the necklace and the bottle and showed the king. The king's jaw dropped as he recognized the necklace as one his queen wore before they got married. He had complimented the necklace before as it looked so unique. It was then that the king realized that his queen had not worn the necklace since they got married. How is this possible? The king asked Ireti who told him that the only way of finding out if his current queen was an impostor or not was to wear her the necklace. The king, knowing who the queen was, decided that it would be too dangerous to confront the queen. So he plotted with Ireti on how to execute their plan without the queen's knowledge. That night, the king threw a party and put a sleeping herb in the queen's drink. She took the drink and fell into a very deep sleep. The king then ordered his guards to chain the queen's legs and arms as he placed the necklace on her neck. To their greatest surprise, the necklace refused to rest on the fake queen's neck and her face began to change into a very ugly looking woman. Everyone screamed in fear, including the king, who could not believe that he had been living with a witch all this while. Next thing they heard was the shattering of a bottle as the real queen emerged from inside the bottle where she had been locked up for a very long time. The real queen then told them all that happened. She revealed that the night before her wedding to the king, she was taking a stroll to her farm to bury her most valuable necklace when she suddenly felt dizzy. After a few hours, she woke up in a hut unable to speak or walk. She then saw a very ugly woman who told her that her time was up and that she would be the queen of the village using her face. She thought the woman was joking but soon realized that she was serious when she saw her picture and that of the woman on a table. Before she realized what was going on, she fell unconscious again and did not know what happened next. After a few days, she saw herself wandering around the village, but no one could see her except Ireti. Since the queen was unable to speak, she tried all she could to tell Ireti her story and it took the dedication of Ireti as well as her patience and bravery to solve the mystery. The queen was so grateful to Ireti for saving her life and she told Ireti to come work for her as her personal maiden. What this meant was that Ireti would live in the palace with the queen and be the head of the queen's chamber. Ireti was so excited at the offer and rushed home to grab her bags. Once the queen was safe, the king then ordered his guards to lock the wicked witch up in the palace dungeon forever. Ireti returned home to meet her bags outside her auntie's house. Her auntie was spreading some clothes outside and expected Ireti to come beg her for forgiveness. To her greatest surprise, Ireti approached her auntie and thanked her for all the years that she sheltered, clothed, and fed her. Ireti then told her auntie that she was going to live in the palace as the queen had given her a job. Her auntie laughed and called her a dreamer, saying 
that she should wake up from her dream and smell reality. She called Ireti all sorts of unprintable names as Ireti thanked her and quietly left. A few days later, news of Ireti's new appointment as the Queen's special maiden spread around the village, reaching the ears of her auntie Bola who began to regret all she said and did to Ireti. That was how Ireti's life changed and the queen was forever indebted to her for saving her life. The lesson to be learned from this story is that hard work, courage and kindness can lead to unexpected rewards and blessings. Ireti's dedication to her work and her willingness to help the faceless girl ultimately led to her saving the true queen and being rewarded with a prestigious position in the palace. This story reminds us that even in challenging circumstances, being diligent, compassionate and persistent can lead to positive outcomes and change the course of one's life for the better. It also highlights the importance of not underestimating the value of kindness and the impact it can have on others. I hope you enjoyed the story. Like, subscribe and leave a comment. It helps us grow our channel. I'll see you in our next story. Bye.